Well, hey guys, welcome to Hilltop Machine Works. I am Tom. Come on in. Well, hey everybody, it's Tom here. We are back in the shop. Time for another video. I have been, uh, you know, scouring the old Ebays. You know, if you guys know and you watch my channel regularly that I like Ebay, um, you can find some good bargains there, especially on machine tooling. So I've uh, picked up a couple things from Ebay and I've also ordered a couple things. Uh, some shards and grizzly and whatnot, and uh, stuff has been piling up. So I figured, what better way to uh, go ahead and get this stuff dispersed? Show you guys first, and have another mail call. So this is mail call number thirteen. And um, first off, I'd like to say uh, thanks to all my new subscribers. I uh, appreciate you checking out the channel, and I appreciate you hitting that red banner down there. Um, that way, I know you're out there. And also leave comments. I love talking to you guys. And um, without further ado, let me move the camera down and um, I'll show you the goodies I got. Alrighty, so I guess uh, first off, uh, we'll start with some eBay stuff. So I picked up some inserts for aluminum turning. I do uh, a fair amount of aluminum cutting on the uh, on the lathe and the mill. So uh, these are some CNG 432's. Um, probably my favorite go-to insert. But uh, these are specific for aluminum cutting. And what I did is I uh, picked up uh, another tool holder from Shars. Uh, that way it is just dedicated for aluminum only. I don't have to swap inserts. So I grab that. So you'll probably be seeing me uh, turning this on the lathe with uh, some aluminum chips flying, hopefully. And then also from Shars, I grabbed another quick change tool post just to uh, relinquish the, uh, the one there that uh, I got filled up. That way I always have an extra one and I need to... Uh, you know, throw a tool in one. I don't have to take the tool out of one. So, got uh, just an extra one there. And, let's see here. More Char stuff. Um, I was turning on the lathe. Trying to uh, part a piece of... I think it was just 1018. But, uh... Anyways, everything was going good with the parting blade, and uh, I guess I got a, a little anxious, and I fed it just a tad bit too fast, and you know what that happens, crunch, so I broke the blade, <laughs> go figure. So, got me another replacement parting blade, carbide tipped, obviously. Comes with a handy tool. And... Here. Also from Shars, I grabbed uh, some small V blocks. These are going to be dedicated over at the horizontal bandsaw instead of um, me taking the ones that I've got over here for my mill. These are going to stay over there. So when I need to cut uh, round or uh, odd shaped stock, you know, you can hold this a lot better because you want at least. With the round stuff, I want three points to be able to hold it in the bandsaw so it doesn't turn on you. So these will sit over there, and that'll be their only duty. And lastly, I grabbed an inside mic. This is a 1 to 2. I had a 0.2 to 1.2 inside mic, and I figured I would uh, increase my collection. So I grabbed this one, and what I thought was really cool is the nice standard that comes with it. it uh, it's knurled, so you can grip it good well. And then also, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, how nicely ground the inside surface is of this thing. 
I mean, they really did a nice job on the standard, so I'm really impressed there. So, we'll add that to the measuring tool arsenal. And uh, let's see, I think that is all the Shars goodies. So, um, eBay finds. Um, going through eBay, and um, I don't know, everybody <laughs> likes to collect something. I, uh, I don't know, I have a soft spot for the old vintage uh, dial travel indicators. And this is actually not a federal indicator, even though it came in a federal box. This is a gorgeous, nice Ames. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me get up here a little bit closer and try to get so it doesn't get washed out in the white so you can see it uh, a little better. But um, isn't she a beauty? So it's a tense indicator. Nice and heavy, nice and beefy. Lug on the back. So smooth as glass. So, figured uh, what I might do is use this one over at the uh, at the mill when I'm boring. Um, I can use this one to uh, adjust the boring head, you know, a few thousands at a time. I don't trust the the rotating dial because it's an import. So I think that is what uh, this little baby is going to do. So cute as pie, don't you think? And it's kind of ironic it came in an old federal box. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I got that for a real good deal on eBay. So the guy had a reasonable price, but he also had to make me an offer. So I made him an offer and he said, yep. I said, cool. So I grabbed that one. And um, also, when I was making those um, rotating pads for my machine skates, you know, I was make, originally making them out of the 4140 and uh, made two of them. And then I realized um, when I went in and had lunch and I was checking out steel prices, how much it would be to replace the, the piece of stock that I was using up, how much the price of 4140 had gone up. So um, I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm, we'll get some 1018 and we'll make the other two. So I got on eBay and found uh, this guy. He's called Pink Wrestler. He sells a lot of drops. So I picked up... Uh, Four 1018 drops, so obviously the other two I've already machined, and uh, you've seen that on the video. And then uh, he had some 4140, which I grabbed, and obviously he threw it in the box for the uh, same price as the, the original shipping cost, so no extra shipping to get these in there. So that was pretty cool. Like I said, he goes by Pink Wrestler on uh, eBay. James Green over there at uh, Eagle Dust Off 37 turned me on to him. He told me about him, so thanks, James. I appreciate that. And uh, I guess lastly off eBay is um, I picked up, this is a diamond lapping compound. I know uh, Tom Lipton over there at Ox Tools has uh, shown a couple videos on lapping. And uh, Randy Richards recently did one of uh, him lapping in a, uh, a little pedestal on his comparator there. So I figured I'd grab some stuff. I may have a lapping project coming up. So these are syringes full of all different uh, grits. And let's see. Um, I hit up Grizzly because I thought I had a, a complete die set on my bigger dies. And I went to uh, clean some threads off and I found out it was a 5 8 18 it was a fine thread and I went and looked and I did not have a, uh, a 5 8 18 thread so that was a hole in my set and then I also I said well I might as well check all of them and the only other one I did not have is a 9 16 18 so these are two inch in diameter round dies so that completes my big die collection and what they go in is this baby here. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. I think I uh, may have shown it on the video, but I picked this up a couple years ago. We were um, in a small town up in the mountains of Virginia doing a little kind of antique shopping and just, you know, exploring the, uh, the old main street in the town. Went in this uh, 
antique shop, didn't really have anything, but in the back, they had a tool room. So I was like, sweet. So, you know, I beeline for that. Got back there. Uh, most of the stuff was just, you know, some auger bits, uh, you know, maybe a rusty hammer or a, uh, a saw or, you know, nothing really machinist related until I found this down in the uh, bottom of a wooden box. And so what this is, obviously, is a tap wrench, but it's also a die wrench. Is that cool or what? It's multi-purpose. So if you need to cut some external threads, the die goes in here. Or if you want to cut some internal threads, then your tap goes in here and you adjust it. You can see the jaws coming in. So now it becomes a tap handle and then you would obviously tap. So very cool. The guy wanted 15 bucks for it. Didn't even argue. Paid the guy the $15. Couldn't find a maker's mark on it. Cleaned it up and I, finally I found all the way up here on the edge of this circumference of this adjustable dial is written J.M. Carpenter Tap and Die Company, Pawtucket, Rhode Island, USA, patent August.25.9. So I don't know if that's 1909, but uh, Obviously, it's just, it's, a, it's an old one. It's um, odd that it does both, but that's pretty cool. That's kind of a, you know smart thinking back then. So um, I know there's a couple YouTube creators, uh, Adam Booth and both James Kilroy. They both love vintage tap and die stuff. So if I ever get a chance to meet them in person, I know I'd love to show them this and this also other beauty. While we're on the subject, I picked this up, uh, same town, they had a swap meet, and it is a little turret tap wrench. Is this freaking cool or what? Look at the bluing on it. So what it does is you adjust it, and she screws out, and then your end of your tap would go in here, you'd lock it down, and then you turn it. So let me get a little closer you can see it. But uh hope it's not getting too washed out, but isn't this a little beauty? And it even came in its original box. If you can see that. I did a little research and I found an old magazine published in 1913 and this is what this was advertised in one of the pages so I mean it's awesome that this has survived over a hundred years but even the original box I imagine wow I imagine the box is almost probably worth more than the tap wrench itself but it says turret head tap and drill holder number 333 Sawyer Tool Manufacturing Company um, Abraham Mass USA so thought that was a little darling it paid uh, twenty eight dollars for it so don't not sure if I'll ever use it but uh, I sure couldn't leave it sitting on the table and I'll get the camera back up so I think that's all my purchases oh I'm sorry one more um, grabbed this uh, nice brown and sharp mag base it's nice and big and beefy and as you can see I got a GoPro mount on it so it works perfect to uh, hold the GoPro camera like on over at the milling machine and also on the big, big Monarch lathe that way I can extend this thing out and get you some good shots so I grabbed that off eBay also alrighty so I think that's all my stuff now I can put it all up um, let me see, unfortunately, uh, my schedule's not going to allow me to go to, uh, the Bar Z Summer Bash this year. I wish I could go out there and meet you guys and, you know, rub shoulders and talk shop, but, uh, it's just not in the cards this year. I'm afraid that, uh, I'll have to try to pencil it in for next year, so I will not be there if you guys are curious. And I think... 
I am going to move uh, my big red Jeep outside. Uh, you know, the shop is just so tight right now. I could use the space. I'm not doing much Jeep work anymore. So I think I'm going to bite the bullet and go to Harbor Freight, buy one of those uh, canopy carports, put it up out there, and then put the Jeep out there, and it can live out there. And that'll free me up, you know, about half the shop. So then I can move my welding table over there, do all my welding and stuff up closer to the door. And we'll redesign this area right here that you're seeing now. Move the surface grinder over, move the uh, arbor press and whatnot. Give me a little more room to operate down in here. And then, um, you know, I won't be tripping over stuff all the time. So I think that's going to be the game plan. So you'll, uh, you'll see a new looking interior here probably in the next video or two. And I think uh, that is it for this mail call, so I won't ramble on any longer. As you can tell, I'm a little stuffed up. Pollen is out, but hey, oh well, I'd rather have the sun. So, with that, I appreciate you guys watching. You know, hit the thumbs up button, leave comments, and we'll catch you guys on the next video, alright?